Chapter 20 I am sorry. I have something to take care of. Things are not what they seem to be. Know that I love you, and I have taken upon myself this duty to shield you from hurt. I might be gone for a while. Please forgive me for this seemingly cruel departure. Naruto stared listlessly at the piece of paper that bore his wife's handwriting. He could hardly believe that Mito had simply departed without a word to him. Three years he had wandered the nations to be strong enough to heal her. Three years he had trained like never before, reaching intensities in effort that Jiraiya often christened as suicidal. What did she tell you, Tsunade? He asked softly, looking up at his granddaughter who was looking despondently outside the window. She told me to take care of you. That she had something to do that only she could do, replied the golden-haired Hokage in a voice that shook ever so slightly. She left Kanoa just two days after you did, you know how hard she is to track. Hachiha are in short supply, and the other censors could not do much. She hid herself with Fuunjutsu. You know she will be out of Kanoa by this time. Naruto stopped himself from crushing the paper. He knew Mito as well as he had known himself. She always was fiercely independent, ridiculously so, but far from foolish. I believe she is not after the Agatsuki at all, Tsunade, he said with a humorless chuckle. She is much like Dabairama was in that regard, shrewd and canny while attacking enemies. She would have undoubtedly sought my help if she had gone after pain. Whatever it is she must be reasonably confident of accomplishing it, he said with a troubled look getting up and donning his white cloak that supposedly made him look like a clone of the Yandame. Naruto? said Tsunade suddenly as he walked towards the door. He paused, turning to look at her inquisitively. Reconciling the images of the little girl he had bounced on his knees as Hashirama, and the full-bodied cynical woman who he saw as Naruto was at best confusing to him. But there was no help for it. Tsunade was who she was and he would gain very little in confounding himself too much. Yes, Tsunade? You have been invited to the barbecue restaurant on Main Street by the rookies of your batch, to celebrate your return and the successful rescue of Arambu. I would recommend that you go, she told him gently. Since your dot awakening, you have had very little rest. Will you? Perhaps it is for the best, agreed Naruto resignedly. Already the euphoria of defeating Orochimaru was fading away, being replaced by anxiety for his wife. He knew better than anyone else that Mito could take care of herself despite that free collapse three years ago. He was going to respect her wishes and let her accomplish this task which obviously meant so much to her. But he was not entirely foolish. Makaton, Makyabunshin no Jutsu, he said weaving a hand sign. Eight wood clones were born out of him streaking outside the Hokage's office in eight different directions. They have a chance of finding and tracking her, I cannot sit doing nothing. I want to be ready if she needs help, admitted Naruto sadly. Tsune nodded to him looking like she expected nothing else. Before she opened her mouth to reply, Naruto had disappeared with a leaf shunshin. He appeared with a swirl of leaves near the barbecue restaurant Choji adored so much feeling the ebb and swirl of a mostly content humanity around him. Citizens he did not even know bowed happily to him, glancing appreciatively at his long white cloak and the double trident symbol of the Sinju clan upon its back. Nodding politely to each villager and shinobi, he made his way across the sea of citizens. As he pushed the door open, his eyes fell upon the large table that dominated almost the entire hall. Seated around it was the so-called rookie nine of his batch along with a few other familiars. He smiled fully, unable to contain the sense of joy rising within him as the entire posse rose as one, cheering wildly as they caught sight of him. Shikamaru and Sasuke were applauding quietly, and Sakura's excitement was all too evident as he immersed himself in the joyful atmosphere permeating the restaurant. Yuzuki Yuja did not escape his notice as she sat demurely beside Sasuke, looking at him with a sublime gratitude. Thank you, thank you, he grinned as Rock Lee ushered him enthusiastically to a seat between Sasuke and Sakura. Perhaps for a few hours he could lay aside the cares and troubles of his two lives, and just be with the people he cared about. If only Mito were here. 
then it would be complete, he thought with an aching heart as the clamor caused by his arrival subsided. Shunting aside his anxiety and fears with difficulty, he took in the sight his former classmates. So you have become Jounin, he said to Nejai who nodded with a faint smile. Naruto had had minimal interaction with the Hyuga previously, but he had heard the rumors. Apparently Nejai was to the Hyuga what Uchi had been for the Uchiha a genius of the highest level. Then he noticed the attire of Yujiao, and the underlying tone of sadness in her emotions. She is mourning for her lost teammates, Kurama reminded him. Sorrow stabbed through him for the horrors the young woman had probably undergone, the least of which were the loss of her Anbu teammates. All eyes turned to him as he walked to the blue-haired Anbu, holding her gaze with his own. The floor beneath him buckled and cracked as he extended his hand, stalks of several beautiful flowers blooming as everyone in the restaurant watched silently. For the ones you lost, he said quietly, handing her the bouquet of very colored flowers. She accepted his gift with a grateful incline of her head, and he saw her eyes shine with tears for the smallest instant before she gained control. A measure of solemnity stole through the group at the poignant scene, but the ever ebullient Rock Lee jumped onto the table and yelled, pumping his fist high into the air. Youth Naruto and the rest of Team 7 watched as Lee's unwarranted interruption sent Chaji's meal flying, sending the stout boy into a rage. This is fun, he said with anticipation as he saw their proper little meeting turn into a general brawl as Choji tried to avenge the loss of his meal. Is it always like this? Pretty much, said Sasuke with a grimace. The brawl had devolved into a fierce food fight and cups of ramen and barbecue went flying everywhere in the restaurant. So much for a quiet meal with friends. I am never going to eat with that fat so again, he said disgustedly. The restaurant went so silent that Naruto could actually hear everyone's heartbeat. Sasuke-kun, said Sakura with a dawning horror. Sasuke glanced from her to Choji who was bristling with anger. Oh, crap, he muttered as the Akimaki slowly began to stalk toward him. The next moment a splatter sound was heard, and Naruto sniggered as he saw Choji soup emptied on Sasuke's face. Said Gran was wiped out as he felt Shikamaru's shadow hands empty a huge platter of rice on his head. He glanced at Sasuke, who glanced back at him. They nodded decisively to each other and turned back to the now apprehensive food fighters. It's on, said Naruto with glinting eyes and reached for the remaining items on the table in a blur. This really is fun. I must get together with these kids on a regular basis. They certainly know how to enjoy life. He thought happily as he and Sasuke spilled a jar of juice each on Sakura and Yujiao respectively. The whole thing devolved into general chaos and pandemonium from then on. Dot. Would you please stop doing that? Said Tsunade as she leaned back on her chair, in response to Jiraiya ogling her impressive breasts. It's already old, Jiraiya. I can even give you an eyeful if you want right now. She said in a tired manner as her hands reached towards her strained top. Jiraiya's lecherous behavior disappeared immediately at this alarming departure from their routine, and he caught Zunaid's hand firmly as it traveled upwards. What is wrong? He asked seriously. You have never, ever voluntarily exposed yourself to me. What happened? He asked. He was shocked rudely for the second time as Zunaid laid her head on his chest, and hugged him tightly. Tsunade, I am freaking out here, he said weakly as he enfolded her in his embrace, not that he did not enjoy her soft breasts pushed up against his chest in this manner, but this unnatural deviation from practice routing was alarming him greatly. It's bad, Jiraiya, she said softly and he felt her tears wet his front. It's very bad. I read Obison's letter. The one I was supposed to read after I spoke to Ojison. I dot I have no idea what to do now. There is too much at stake. Jiraiya interrupted her by gently pushing her away, and picked up the letter lying open at the table. His face grew pale with shock as he scanned its contents, the elegant calligraphy of Mitosama filling the entire page. He turned blankly to Tsunade, who was shedding silent tears. His grief was no less than what she was feeling. He turned back to the letter and read once more to make sure it was not some illusion or his mind playing tricks on him. Jiraiya and Zunaid
I am not leaving in such a hurry for no reason. During my captivity, I was constrained by an Uzumaki blood contract seal, and my youth in Uzushiage cure it was used primarily for disabling criminals, and it was used by the aristocratic class only. I was the daughter of the Uzukaj after all. I should know. I am sure you have already drawn conclusions. The only remaining Uzumaki we know of is Kashina, and her father was the head of one of our primary sealing clans. All the evidence points to her, how the imposter was able to get past the sealing guards I had improved around Kanoa, his exact information on my vulnerable position, and finally the seal itself. It was created by someone trained by the Uzumaki themselves in Fuu and Jutsu, and she is the only one I know of who fits these criteria. Kashina is a possible and likely traitor. If the one I consider husband comes to know of this, it might tear him apart. I know him, and I know him very well. The choice of whether or not to kill Kashina will drive him insane, the pulls of Hashirama's will to protect the village no matter the cost will work against the pull of Naruto's love for his mother. It might extinguish his will of fire, and I will die before I see that happen. Hashirama was reborn as Naruto for a reason, and I am certain that reason does not include falling into depths of despair. So it falls to us. It falls to us three to deal with Kashina quietly and efficiently, and without Naruto ever knowing of my suspicions. If he does, it might drive Kanoa itself apart in terrible ways. You must lie to him. Remember that he can sense your feelings. Better yet, send him far away from Kanoa and Kiri so that he cannot ever suspect what is being hidden from him. I will deal with Kashina myself, and I will not hesitate to ask for help if necessary. I know wood clones will be following me soon enough, don't worry, I can subvert them to my own use and manipulate what my husband hears from them. Consider me as a deep cover and boo operative, on the level of Achai Haichi. I cannot reiterate strongly enough, my husband should never know of Gushina's betrayal until I can find out more and act. Keep yourselves and him safe. For me. Jairaya's hands shook as he dropped the piece of paper and sat himself down on Tsunade's chair. It was a mark of Tsunade's distress that she did not punch him to kingdom come, instead staring at him despondently. I cannot lie to him, Jiraiya. He can pick up fluctuations in my emotions like kunai from the air, she said, wiping away her tears angrily. It's impossible. Then we have to do what Mito-sama suggests, muttered Jiraiya. Then his face brightened somewhat, I know. He is Jounin, isn't he? Let us give him a Jinin team. They will be dying to have him as their sensei. Tsunade stared at him. Too obvious, she shook her head. He wants to be on the front lines and this will be like taking him down a notch from it. I think I have a better solution, she said in a preoccupied tone. Jairaya waited patiently, she often did this to him, throw out the promise of a solution and hold out on him. Tsunade suddenly met his eyes, a faint smile lighting up her features. How happy do you think your motto will be if I assign Naruto to his Anbu team? She asked with a smug voice. Jiraiya smirked for an instant, and then resumed turning over the problem of Gushina brutally in his mind as he replied moodily, I think we will start seeing a dramatic success rate in Anbu missions. Dot. Naruto lounged about leisurely in his apartment. They had had their first drinks of rather strong sake after the food fight, and Naruto found that his capability for holding strong drink was very low unlike his previous life. He and his former teammates had somehow blundered into his apartment and fallen asleep in haphazard positions. Sasuke and Sakura were out cold from the copious quantities of strong drink they had imbibed. It appeared he was the first one to wake. Before he made for the shower, a polite knock sounded at the door. Come in, he said warily. The door opened inwards, allowing a man in Anbu uniform to enter sheepishly. The man was wearing no mask, instead wearing a face guard and possessed strong features. Naruto smiled at the man, he could sense something all too familiar in the man's chakra. So, you are the market and user I sensed during the chonin exams? How did you come to possess the wood released? He asked waving aside the formalities the man was about to begin. I am Yamato, Anbu captain, 
said the man looking around the apartment with a faint distaste. I suppose you should know my story. Orakamaru cultivated me as a fetus in his lab experiments, and infused me with the first Hokage's cells. I survived, said Yamato shortly. Naruto's eyes narrowed, Orakamaru, he was beginning to understand was not evil in the traditional sense of the word. The man simply was unbound by any moral code or ethics, his only ideal being power. Why are you here, Yamato-san? He asked carefully. Yamato grimaced as Sasuke let loose a particularly large snore, and Sakura murmured unintelligibly in her sleep. We can go outside if you want. I am not particularly fond of alcohol-ridden air either, he admitted. Yamato nodded and they disappeared with a shunshun each, appearing in the midst of training ground 7. He took a deep breath of the clean air. The forest air that he loved so much, and immersed himself in the sensory perceptions. Earth and water nature, naturally. Strong in both natures, he commented as Yamato appeared behind him. This is an extremely unique situation, he said with a grin, turning to face his visitor. He had thought he was the only one who had ever possessed Makatan, his bloodline was unique. I have never been attacked with Makatan before, he stated and sensed a subtle shift in Yamato's manner. Me too, he replied stoically, but with strong amusement underlying his words. Naruto felt the presence of several other seasoned shinobi who he assumed was in Yamato's team. The effects of his hangover began to subside steadily, and the soothing calmness of his chakra washed over him like rejuvenating cold water. This opportunity was too good to pass up. Show me what you can do, Yamato, he invited. The Anbu captain tilted his head, and disappeared with a burst of speed. The ground shook slightly as Naruto parried the man's kick just before it smashed into his face. Yamato's hands flickered towards his vital points in a series of potentially incapacitating jabs, and he batted them all aside gracefully. This is Anbu-style Taijutsu, designed to kill and kill very fast. Strictly efficient but lethal, he thought as he flowed through the motions of his own nature fist. A bastardized version of the Jukin just like mine. He thought Riley as he gracefully pushed away Yamato's knife-handed slash with an open palm. He bowed his head, feeling the air being split by Yamato's kick as it passed over where him. He spun, delivering a roundhouse kick that struck the Anbu captain right on the face guard and throwing him away a few yards. Wood clone, huh? He thought appreciatively as the clone showed its true nature. He sensed water chakra being molded behind him. Suetan. Suiryuda no Jutsu, shouted Yamato, and Naruto felt the Anbu captain draw water from deep within the earth. The water dragon roared high into the air, and came down upon him like wrath itself. Shunshin no Jutsu, he said with a half ram seal formed, disappearing as the dragon devastated the ground he stood upon. He grinned as the water dragon circled around, rushing towards him with alarming speed. He laid a hand upon the ground. Finding Yamato's connection to the groundwater that lay deep within. Just as the dragon was about to fall upon him, he shattered that connection. What the, whispered Yamato, reeling as if struck heavily. His jutsu simply disappeared, losing coherency immediately. What the hell was that? He demanded angrily and Naruto dusted his hands busily. Suetan, Haonryu, said Yamato again and Naruto watched as a howling vortex of water took shape between them, rushing towards him with a sinister whistling sound. Dotan, Doryu Utaiga, he said coolly, watching the water vortex being absorbed by the swamp that materialized beneath it. Now it begins, he thought with anticipation as he sensed Yamato's earth and water chakras combining in a familiar pattern. Yamato slammed his palms together to form the serpent seal and suddenly several bars of wood rose around him in a rectangle and combined to encase him in a large prison of wood. He was thoroughly intrigued at this new technique. Not too bad, really. He laid a hand upon the wood, feeling its structure and potency. He at best inherited a fraction of my ability with Makaton, he realized, less than satisfied with the prison encasing him. It looked impressive, certainly, and it was impressive to a layman, so to speak. He doubted if it could hold even Kisame. If there was anything he knew to the depth and core, it was wood release. 
K, he said calmly, finding the weak points of the wood and forcing the prison apart at those specific points. The results were, to put it mildly, spectacular. The wood prison exploded outwards in a hail of wood pieces, revealing a flabbergasted yaw motto. Do not put the prison together so symmetrically. It is far too easy to break it if you can visualize the structure with that much clarity, he advised the Anbu captain. Yamato said nothing, only shooting him a stupefied glare. Naruto held up the ram seal. This is how you do it, Yamato-san. Makaton, Teishoki Mosho, he said, and large branches of wood sprouted around Yamato, blending together in fantastic shapes to finally encase the man in a dome-like structure of wood. This is pretty unfair to him, you know? It is as futile as countering my Bajadama with Rasengan, put in the cube by. Naruto shook his head, he had to know how good this person was with the wood release. He could feel Yamato's chakra surging and spiking as the Anbu tried to break out of his prison. It's not that easy, he called out as Yamato's efforts doubled. It requires skill as well, skill you probably don't have yet. Do you give up? Suddenly the chakra surges within the dome disappeared, and Naruto cocked his head as he felt Yamato sealing chakra in ways that was almost as familiar to him as breathing. Before he could react, his dome exploded into smithereens as hundreds of branches of wood rushed towards him, multiplying and growing by the second. Strange feelings rushed through Naruto as the deluge of trees rushed towards him. He could not help but admire the scene this technique made. So this is how it feels to be on the other end of the deep forest emergence, he mused. He could feel Yamato straining terribly. The man was obviously at his limit with the use of this technique. As the deep forest rushed towards him, he too answered with the same technique. Makaton, Jukai Ka Uten. Massive trees were birthed in front of him, each tree far larger than the ones Yamato had created. Naruto watched as the two onrushing forests met each other with a deafening sound, trying to force their way through each other. He growled with the effort, feeling Yamato manipulate his trees with surprising skill. But wood release was his just as surely as the Rinnegan belonged to the Six Path Sage. He yelled out, and slammed his palms together, his forest spilled out over Yamato's and over the entire training ground crushing the much smaller trees and tearing through the Anbu captain's technique with an explosive report. Tsukamaru, he said loudly, and the opposing forest was completely uprooted by his and Yamato was finally caught firmly by the winding branches of his forest. To his surprise, he found himself breathing slightly heavier than before. A massive grin split his face as he dispelled his technique, causing a heavily gasping Yamato to drop down to the ground on one knee. He appeared before the man, and offered a hand to him. Yamato grasped it firmly and stood up with some effort. Amazing, said Naruto shaking his head appreciatively. You are surprisingly skilled with wood release, Yamato-san, though you lack the force with which the first Hoka used it. But it is a dangerous tool you possess nevertheless. We need to fight more often, he said as he sent Chakra into the man. Clapping sounds were heard around the clearing and he saw a team of three approaching him, all masked and clad in Anbu uniform of course. Sasuke, Kakashi, Yujao, he greeted, grinning at the exasperation he felt from them. The three took off their masks at his greeting, and Yamato thanked him and withdrew his hand. Good fight, yes? Yes, said Sasuke dryly. You didn't raise Kano to the ground, that's a good thing. And do you know that we wear masks for a reason? You can't go around identifying Anbu by name. Catch, said Yujao, and tossed him a bird mask. Huh? I'm not Anbu, if you remember, he said, examining the seals upon the mask curiously. Yamato shook his head. You are, from this moment onwards, he said and Naruto looked up attentively. Hokage Sama's orders. Our team consists of yourself, I. Kakashi, Sasuke and Yujao. We are to take an S-rank mission of high sensitivity in Tsunagakure. Two of the fourth Kazakaja's children have been abducted, said the Anbu in a hard voice. As you have obviously guessed, it is a ploy by Akatsuki to draw out the Akabi Jinj Urikigara. And has it worked? He asked, looking around at the pensive team. 
Kakashi nodded sadly. The latest intel from Jiraiya Sama's network suggests that it has. We are to join with the four man cell from Kumage Kure near the borders of Fire Country. Raikage is sending his own sensor type to aid in the mission. You are our strongest sensor type, and my ninja hounds are adept at tracking. Gara was met by Akatsuki at Tsunagakure's borders yesterday, continued Yujao. Two unidentified Akatsuki captured him as he made a frantic bid to rescue his siblings. Hokage Sama would not ordinarily disturb you for this sort of mission, but there is a chance that the leader of Akatsuki might be present at the ceiling of the Ikibi. Or perhaps a Chaiha Ichi. Or even worse, both. Say no more, said Naruto calmly. His blood began to race. He was itching for a chance to fight pain, and he was going to go even if there were the slightest chance of pain being present. When do we leave? He asked. Immediately, replied Sasuke. Naruto smiled grimly. This way he would be protecting Mito as well. Instead of waiting for the threat to go to her, he would go to the threat and wipe it out if he could. Something is off here. Something does not feel right here. What? An instinct. Can you actually handle a completely mobile pain with the vitality of the Uzumaki and bearing the eyes of Rikidu? It might be close, far too close for comfort. You are not yet at the height of your old power, let alone what was added to it in this life. Defeat is a possibility for you as well if you face pain as you both are now. So? So I don't want to get captured because of your arrogance, you idiot. It is not arrogance to do one's duty, he returned stubbornly as he followed his now teammates as they streaked out towards the gates of the village. He knew pain was going to be ridiculously strong, perhaps as bad as Madara himself had been. It was definitely good that he was going to have such excellent companions in this mission, his team combined with the Kumo team could definitely hold off Akatsuki leaving him free to face pain if he was present. Achaiha Ichi was contemplating what was becoming an increasingly familiar scene at the Akatsuki base, Toby had developed an unwholesome taste of targeting the loved ones of the Jinch Uriki. Bound tightly and gagged were the siblings of the Akabi Jinch Uriki, Timari, and Konkuro. Capturing those children had been no chore for the Akatsuki, and Kakazu had accomplished that task alone. Diodara and Seizauri are prepared and are on standby with the captive at the other base, said Pain from behind him. As expected, the Akabi Jinchu Uriki made an attempt to cross over the Kuma border to attempt a rescue and was captured by them. But an unforeseen and extremely irritating complication has arisen, stated the Akatsuki leader balefully, and Urchi saw the man's chakra surge in response to his rage. Yes concurred Toby as he materialized next to Ichi. Somehow Yuzumaki Naruto has gotten wind of what we're up to. Our little bait at Kiri was useless, then. Ichi quietly observed the masked imposter, he and Pain had been talking about some bait they had set up at Kiri for Naruto. He knew not to ask of it, though, it was bait for him as well. He knew that if Naruto suddenly knew of this so-called bait at Kiri then Toby would have reason to suspect him concretely. Games within games was the order of the day at Akatsuki. And what of Orakimaru? He asked coolly. Oragakure was nothing but a front, something for Kanoa to chew on as we implemented our real plans. Their chew toy is taken away now. We might have to face them head on. It might complicate matters. Orakimaru is resurrecting his little village even as we speak, but around a different base this time, responded Pain. But he is of peripheral importance now. We should decide how to deal with Yuzumaki Naruto. I have received intel that he will be joining up with a Kumo team consisting of the Jounin Shi, Darui and the two remaining Cloud Jinch Uriki, Kairabi, and Yujito. Combine them with the Kanoa team consisting of your brother, Yuzumaki, Hatake Kakashi, and a couple other Ambu. We can safely say Diodara and Seizauri do not stand a chance. We must begin the sealing immediately. Send word to all the Akatsuki to arrive at the other base in projection form. It will be a race against time given what Kanoa and Kumo are throwing at us, we might have to resort to that technique. I will not allow the Akabi to be taken from us, not now, said Toby decisively and spiraled out of the hall, taking the two sand siblings with him.
Shukaku was always monumentally stupid and frankly a little insane, commented Kurama as Naruto and his team streaked towards the border in a blur. Why he allowed his Jinch Uriki to run wild even at the threat of capture and sealing is beyond me. You humans are far too unstable as evidenced by Shukaku's Jinch Uriki in this instance, and you have the audacity to call us unstable. Yes, yes. You have given me hundreds of examples of how Baiju are far superior to humans. And I have agreed every single time, if you remember. But what I really want to know is why they want the Baiju. I mean, it is obvious they want it for power but all power has a purpose. So this must have a purpose as well. Who knows? Commented Kurama idly. I mean, pain is essential to this because only he can summon the vessel powerful enough to contain all nine of us at once. The Judo Statue. We have been over this line of reasoning several times already, and every conclusion I draw has me worried. This is all your fault. You should never have bothered with capturing us all those years ago. Just because you can do something does not mean you should do it. Now here you are, blundering around to fix the consequences of mistakes a century past. Just be thankful I am here, replied Naruto tiredly. Kumo team waiting for us straight ahead under cover of trees. Two strong chakras, possibly Genshu Uriki. Two other highly seasoned chakras, likely experienced Jounin. We must take care, he alerted them grimly, receiving short nods in return. A few minutes later Naruto called a halt, and they alighted from the treetops towards the ground together. The speed with which they were traveling was quite considerable, and they had reached the borders within a matter of hours. Also, they had apparently reached the Kumo team who by the looks of it had been waiting for quite some time. They actually had a fire going, and a few tents pitched around a massive banyan tree. Naruto raised a hand in response to the rap-felt greeting of the Hachibi Jinchu Uriki, and Yujito's dignified one. Darui seemed to prefer silence to speech. Some people took laziness to a different level. Yamato, Kakashi, and Darui were speaking with a mutual wariness and respect. A little more interesting was how the golden-haired Jounin Shiite Sasuke. It was pure venom on both sides. Achai Sasuke. I still have to pay you back for that Jinjutsu you caught me in last year. Count yourself lucky that we are ordered to work together, or I would make you squeal. Spat she angrily. This is obviously not new to anyone here, he thought, observing how everyone ignored the little staring match Sasuke and she had going. Sasuke looked at she as if he were something spawned on rotten meat, and turned away haughtily provoking more insults from the Kumo Jounin. What is their problem? He asked Yujao, who was shaking her head disappointedly at Sasuke, a rivalry during a joint Anbu exercise between Kumo and Kanoa last year. She got his ass handed to him by Sasuke after he insulted the prowess of the Achaiha clan. I have to go and make sure she does not get fried by Sasuke, she said exasperatedly and disappeared after the rivals. Naruto sighed. I should have known, he thought. Achaiha were very touchy about their clan and honor, like crazy samurai sometimes. B San, Yujito San, nice to see you both again, he greeted, turning to his fellow Jinch Uriki who were observing him quietly. He liked both of them, their emotions were simple and pure despite the discontent of their Baijiu. Naruto San, said Yujito with a slight bow, ignoring B's enthusiastic yells of unintelligible rap. Raikaj-sama sends his greetings and thanks. We did not want to involve you in what is clearly our affair, but facts have to be faced. None of us are equal to the one who leads Akatsuki, or the Achai Hanuk Ninichi. We acknowledge yourself to be in your debt once more. Naruto shot a glance at Yamato and Kakashi, who were deep in discussion with their counterparts. Right now, he had no intention of burying himself in tactical plans. All he wanted was for someone to point him to pain, whom he would proceed to destroy with pleasure. Don't be so formal, Yujito san, he said dismissively. Gara is a Jinch Uriki just like me, and I am responsible for him being placed at Kumo. He does not deserve the torment of extraction. I would help him even if we were enemies. Nino is cool but really a fool, how can you help that poor little whelp? queried B curiously. I think he will be dead by now, 
agreed Ujito as they all seated themselves on a log next to the tents. Perhaps so. But if he is dead, we will avenge him and rescue his siblings if they are alive. But I do not think he is dead yet. I have a certain dot feeling when it comes to the Bajiu, he replied quietly. I would know if Rikabi is sealed away from the world. And I admire your courage, Yujito san, he said, looking steadily at her. You are next on Akatsuki's hit list, what was the Raikage thinking in sending you, anyway? It is a gesture of trust and gratitude, she replied softly. He trusts in your ability to keep me safe, and knows that I would be a far more help against Akatsuki than some Jounin or Black Ops. That, and I failed Gara. He was supposed to be training under my supervision but he gave me the slip somehow, that makes it my responsibility as well. The Raikage is a pretty good guy once you get past his wild side, said Naruto dryly. B chuckled with Yujito at that, and Naruto heard clashes of swords meeting somewhere in the distance. One sensing told him it was Sasuke fighting rather enthusiastically with Shi, and he looked concernedly at Yujito. Will they? Oh yes, she smiled. They will settle down soon enough. She is a level-headed fellow, but for some reason Sasuke irritates him to no end. B and I know, by the way, she said, turning seriously to him. About who you really are, I mean. Nibi and Hachibi have reached a consensus on that by the way. It took us quite some time to accept it dot but now it makes sense. This was by far the most passive reaction Naruto had seen to the uncovering of his identity. He knew it was but a matter of time before Juki or Matt Hobby reached this conclusion. He had actually quite liked the Hellcat during his time with them. Nibi used to make the most random and esoteric observations at times, he had quite liked conversations with a cat. Ah, he said, looking at B who had moved away from them as if bored by their conversation. You seem quite calm about it. I am now, she replied with a smirk. You should have seen me two days ago, I was so silent that Raikage was worried about my mental health. Nibi asks if you have finished learning how to mold Yin Chakra, she said, looking curiously at him. Tell that stupid Hellcat to mind its own business, he grumbled back causing her to giggle. I am weak at Jinjutsu, true, but that is only because of how much Chakra I have. Its idiotic illusions won't work on me anyway. He shot at her. She raised an eyebrow. Nibby said without Makadan you are just an arrogant sod, she informed him. Oh really? He replied with narrowed eyes. Tell that useless tail swishing little creep that Makadan is part of my soul, just like her chakra is part of hers. I will face you without Makadan the day you face me without chakra, cat, he playfully said staring into Yujito's eyes. She seemed transfixed for a moment before she replied. Nibi said. All right, that's enough, sighed Kakashi as he and his three peers appeared around them. Yamato, she and Rui stood around them in a semicircle along with Kakashi. Argue on your own time. Orientation time is over, we need to decide how to proceed. The first order of business is to follow Gara's trail, she and Yujito have a lock on his chakra traces correct? He asked, looking at the Nibi Jinch Uriki who shot Naruto a bemused glance and then nodded to Kakashi. He is somewhere around this vicinity currently, replied Ujito firmly. B has gone on to scout further, he might not be a censor, but he can track just as well as anyone. Good, said Kakashi. Yamato, please send out a clone to help B-san in his scouting. He directed and Naruto smirked as Yamato created a wood clone. There were several differences in how they both used Makaton. His version seemed not pure somehow, but that stood to reason. He knew it was not Yamato's fault, but he could not help feeling disdainful of the several shinobi who had tried to steal his strength. As if they could actually do that, he thought to himself. Kakashi has trouble with Sharingan because it is not his. Similarly, Yamato's Makadan is but a very pale imitation of my true strength. Not to mention Denzo, or Akamaru, Gabuto. Dot dot idiots, all of them to think they could simply gain Makadan with a few experiments, he snorted. Sasuke stopped fooling around, he commented, feeling the spikes in chakra come from that direction. 
he should join us soon enough with his sensei and the other one. Yamato nodded to him. Naruto-san, we were discussing another thing you must know about Akatsuki. Our team and Darui's team have faced this before, said the Anbu. Well, Darui more than us I believe. Kumo has thwarted more than a few attempts by Akatsuki to capture the Nibi and Ikibi. Darui-san? He asked politely of the white-haired gentleman. Darui looked gravely at Naruto, and began to explain. The Akatsuki have a certain kinjutsu they like to use a lot, he elaborated quietly. They possess another body and transform it into a replica of themselves that can be controlled from a safe distance. The only reason we were able to stop those things were because they could use only about a third of their powers in the possessed bodies. We have already faced Hashigaki Kisame when he attacked B-san, and Uchai Haichi when he tried to take both Gara and Yujito during a training exercise. Raikage-sama himself had to intervene. And to his chagrin it was not Uchi he had seemingly killed but some Sunachunin. Naruto remained silent, contemplating the new information. If this is true, then this is what they will possibly do to stall us, he said to the knots of his companions. I too have fought this kind of technique, though at a much higher level. Pain imbues each corpse with a path of his eyes. I have no doubt he will do it again to distract me. If Pain appears along with one or more of those Akatsuki, it will be my fight, he said firmly. Even if all the nine appear? asked Yujito mildly. Even so, I think I can hold off all nine if they come at me with 30% of their powers, he said casually. I really need to speak to Pain and make a few points to him. It seems extremely likely this is how Akatsuki will oppose us. Good information, Darui san. It saved us an ugly ambush, thank you, he said gratefully to the Kumo down and waved away the things lazily. My pleasure, he replied. Oh, and can you please heal she before we all leave, Naruto san? Naruto turned his head to see a bleeding she and Sasuke being herded along by an angry Yujao, and felt Kairabi heading back towards their position. So much for the god of Shinobi. Reduced to a simple Jounin rank for all his accomplishments and towering strength. Why don't you simply bring up that humongous statue of yours and reduce Iwagakure into a pile of rubble? You certainly had no problem using it to pick me like I was a clueless puppy during that fight with Madara. Kurama shot at him. Shinsu Sanju? asked Naruto nostalgically as he moved towards she even as the others prepared to leave their rendezvous point. I already tried it when Jiraiya and I attempted to infiltrate Iwa. And I fainted with chakra exhaustion. I think I will be able to summon it soon enough, though, as you said, I am still not at the height of my old life's power. I am just waiting for after, though he said with relish as he prepared medical chakra and held it over she's wounds. After? Yes. As you know, this life's potential was added to my old life apostrophe s. I can feel it. I will one day surpass the full power I once wielded as Hashirama. Mind-boggling, isn't it? But I can tell this power was given to me for a purpose, he said musingly as the Kumo Jounin's wounds closed and be arrived. He nodded to Yujito who beckoned him to follow. Not very modest, are you? You used to blush like a little girl if someone complimented you back when you were Hashirama, the Kubai said wryly. Well I am not really him anymore, Kubai. I am more than him. Of course. You are more irritating than he ever was. Scoff all you want, said Naruto as he finished patching she up and nodded slightly in response to the Jounin's thanks. They both disappeared with a blur, streaking through the forest behind their now joined teams with rapid body flickers. How I wish Mito had not left so suddenly, he thought with a slight melancholy. I would have loved to speak with her after these years. I can see what you mean by change. You certainly have gained the ability to talk yourself into a depression. Naruto scowled indignantly, but an involuntary chuckle escaped him at the Kubai's quip. You are right he said as he raced past Sasuke. Mito has definitely earned the right to do this, and I know she must believe this errand of hers to be of the utmost importance, he thought. But no matter how he said it to himself, he could not help but feel he had caused Mito hurt somehow. He infused his limbs with chakra and blurred past Darui and Kakashi, 
traveling just behind B who was leading the team. He had a Jinch Uriki to rescue. Hey guys, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you guys want to watch more like it, please subscribe to my channel and become part of the video game fanfiction plot. And please leave a comment down below and hit that like button. If you guys have any suggestions on any stories you guys want me to read, don't hesitate. They're always welcome here in the video game fanfic plot. That also goes for video games. Until next time, goodbye!